Recently, scientists have found startling new evidence about the Great Pyramid of Giza, and they have published a white paper titled Electromagnetic Properties of the Great Pyramid, First Multipole Resonances. The conclusion reported in the July 2018 issue of the Journal of Applied Physics reports, the multipole analysis of the electromagnetic waves scattering by the Great Pyramid has been performed in the radio frequency range and revealed important physical properties concerning the accumulation and focusing of electromagnetic energy. This energy concentration indicates that the Great Pyramid functions as an antenna for the Earth's energy to facilitate its life-sustaining motor. All motors need to be stabilized, and the Great Pyramid generates an energy field to entrain the Earth's motor to continue to run smoothly. As far back as Plato's stories about Atlantis, the Earth has many power stations. Modern evidence confirms that Africa, India, South America, Antarctica, and Australia were once a single continent called Pangaea. At that time, the North Pole was located in the modern Bermuda Triangle region, and the South Pole was near Australia in the Devil's Sea. The main controlling power station was located at the North Pole. The standing wave over the North Pole became unbalanced, collapsed, and cracked the Earth, creating the Atlantic Ocean. Since the Earth is a motor that must operate in a balanced field, this imbalance meant that the Earth would wobble on its axis and the energy it was producing would cease to exist. This would cause the beautiful blue-green orgone energy field produced by the Earth's motor to collapse and the planet would die. An ancient order of interstellar priests came to the rescue of the Earth. First they built a school called Saqqara to instruct the ancient Egyptians. The Egyptian students were trained on the nature of orgone energy, the science of levitation, how to construct pyramids, the Ark of the Covenant, and the Rods of Ptah. By locating the central point of the Pangaea continental landmass, which was Egypt, they built an antenna system using the Great Pyramid. This system was designed to balance the Earth. They also built Stonehenge to act as a control panel for this antenna system. Stonehenge, a vortex generator, monitors and maintains the tip and tilt of the Earth. With this knowledge, the Earth's magnetic field was brought into harmonious balance. When Mary Hardy first entered the Great Pyramid in 1981, she relived a past life in that past time and realized the process of how the Great Pyramid stabilizes the Earth. She saw the ancients use a coil, much like a Tesla coil, which they ran up and down the grand gallery of the Great Pyramid. This technique corrected the Earth's imbalance, returning it to a stable orbit. The pyramid itself is built like an orgone generator. It has dual layers of electric, dielectric material acting as an antenna to maintain the Earth's temperature and orbital balance. Mary's teacher, Kenneth Killick, told her that the Great Pyramid's electric-dielectric nature is realized by layering first a wall of stone, then a crystalline chamber of sand, then a wall of stone, and then another chamber of crystalline sand. Unfortunately, the archaeologists that are trying to understand the pyramid have drilled holes into its walls and have removed the sand. Because of the lack of understanding, these scientists do not realize that they are destroying a very beautiful piece of technology that balances the earth. When Mary went to Egypt in 1981, the pyramid's interior was cool, remaining at a constant 72 degrees. Kenneth Killick explained that this was part of the design, maintaining both the pyramid and the Earth's cool temperature. When she returned to the Great Pyramid in 1992, the interior temperature of the pyramid was warmer than the desert air outside. Mary called Kenneth and related to him the temperature reversal and he again told her about the orgone energy field and said, the damn fools are taking the insulation out and they're making the Earth's antenna a useless piece of equipment. The recent scientific white paper has confirmed that the Great Pyramid is an antenna that acts as a lens and pulls the energy up from the Earth's interior. Unfortunately, some scientists still maintain that the Egyptians were not advanced enough to engineer this electromagnetic field into the pyramid. They say it's just a coincidence. Some archaeologists and physicists can't comprehend the information they have in front of them. They are still calling the pyramids tombs. If they would study 
and understand the pyramid antenna system and reattach it to the Earth's orgone field, they could engineer the tools that were used to build the pyramids. This information is portrayed in many of the Egyptian hieroglyphs. The controlling energy mechanism for these ancient devices was the Ark of the Covenant. We all know the story of Moses parting the Red Sea. When engineers accept that the Ark of the Covenant was a capacitor, and when Moses extended the rod of Ptah on the banks of the Red Sea, he created a soliton that allowed him to part the waters. Mary is convinced that the Egyptians were trained on how to use scalar and soliton energy, and the Great Pyramid generated these fields. Moses, the pharaohs, and the students at Saqqara all knew how to use the rods of Ptah. If we had this information today, it would revolutionize technology. It's a shame that archaeologists, physicists, and mechanical engineers cannot see the simple truth of how the pyramids interact with the Earth. Fortunately, Mary Hardy's Orgone Pyramid preserves the antenna grid to hold the frequency of the heart to protect the Earth. We need to understand that the Earth is a motor. Pyramids and obelisks are antennas, and the tune rods of Ptah can direct and manipulate electromagnetic fields to generate standing waves or solitons, to move this energy. This understanding would greatly benefit all living things, humanity, and Mother Earth.